Welcome to the KPU Cloud Lab for the electron charge to mass ratio experiment. This is going to be the default screen that you'll see when you log in with Makogo. And I just want to explain, first of all, what the equipment you're looking at is. So here in the center, we've got a glass tube, and I'll show you a close up of that later. And then around it, we've got these copper coils. There's actually two of them, one in front of the glass tube and one behind it. These are just big coils of copper wire, and when you run a current through them, that creates a magnetic field. And because of the circular shape of the coils and the fact that there's two of them, that's going to create a magnetic field in the glass tube that's basically constant in direction. We can change the strength of it by changing the amount of current in the coils, but it'll always be pointed in the same direction. Now we have several camera presets that you can choose. So for example, right now we're looking at the device exterior, I'm now going to look at a close-up of the e &M tube in the middle with preset 5. The reason why I'm going to explain this all now is that when I start taking data, it's going to turn off the light in the room so that we can see the electron beam better. So it's better for me to explain this all with the lights on right now. So inside this glass tube, there is this horizontal ruler. We're going to use this to measure the diameter of the electron beam. Over here on the right hand side, we've got three other things. One of them is a heater. That's a piece of metal that we're gonna heat up and that will boil off electrons. So there'll be a little gas of free electrons inside the tube. There's also a cathode and an anode, which we're gonna to use to accelerate those electrons in a straight beam. So I'm gonna show you this later. Now inside this glass tube, there's a low pressure helium gas. And when the electrons are accelerated through it, that causes the gas to glow, which is how we're going to be able to see the electron beam. The gas will glow where the electrons are passing. Now, as I said, as soon as I turn on the heater, it's going to turn off the light. So before I do that, I'll just point out that on this ruler, there are little tick marks, and they're in whole centimeters. So we're going to be able to measure the diameter of our beam in centimeters. And I'm going to zoom in even more close using preset 6. So you can actually see the numbers on the ruler now. There's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then you can't go much bigger than that because that's as big as the tube is. So later on, when you've got the electron beam bent into a circle with the magnetic field, you're going to be able to measure its diameter using this scale. So I'll zoom out again. So now we're ready to take some data. So the first thing you want to do is turn on the heater. So that's this little yellow button here. And you should actually do this as soon as you log on because it can take up to about a minute for things to heat up. So you can see now that the room light is turned off and that the heater is now turned on, so it's starting to glow. The second thing you're going to want to do is turn up the accelerating voltage. So this is what takes that cloud of electrons that is being boiled off the heater and accelerates it into a beam. And so I'm going to do that now and you're going to see a little beam of blue light on the right hand side. So you can see that now. Now right now that beam is hitting the glass, which is actually not good for the bulb. So fairly quickly after you turn up the accelerating voltage, you should also turn up the coil current. And as you can see, that bends that beam into a circle. So remember, the coil current is what's turning up the magnetic field. So the beam voltage accelerates the electrons into a beam, and then the coil current turns up the magnetic field, which is what bends them into a circle. So the objective of this experiment is to study this interplay between the beam voltage, the accelerating voltage for the electrons, the coil current, which sets the magnetic field strength, and the radius of this circle. So now we're ready to take some data. So there's three quantities that we need. We're going to need the beam voltage, the coil current, and the radius of that circle. So to get the beam voltage, you go to preset 4, and our voltage can go up to 500 volts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our measurement off of this bottom scale here, except that you have to remember to multiply each of those numbers by 200. So one is actually 200, two is 400, three is 600. So right now the needle looks like it's a little past 200. So you would estimate what you think that value is as accurately as possible, and don't forget to come up with an uncertainty on it. You also want the coil current, and that's camera preset 3. And our current goes up to 2 amps, so we want to use this top scale for this one here. But you don't need to do any conversion, so you can just read it directly off the top scale. 
So right now the needle looks like it's roughly at 1.2 amps. And again, you want to come up with an accurate uncertainty for that value based on how accurately you can read this scale. And finally, we want to measure the diameter of the beam path. So again, preset five will give you the entire tube, but for this, we probably want to actually zoom in even more. So I'll go to preset six, which shows us the extreme close-up. And so at this point, you want to look at this scale, and remember these numbers are in centimeters, and you want to measure the diameter of the beam. So right now, the beam looks to me like it's pretty much right at 9.5 centimeters. So that would be what I'd write down as my beam diameter, about 9.5 centimeters. Don't forget to estimate an uncertainty on this based on how accurately you think you can read this. The beam's a little fuzzy, it's a little hard to read the ruler. Come up with a good value for the uncertainty of this measurement. And just zooming out a little bit again, as you can see, this is a full circle, so we're measuring the diameter, but the quantity that you're actually going to need is the radius. So you'll take your diameter and you'll divide by two, and you should think about what you need to do to your uncertainty. Do you need to divide that by two also? Think about that. When you're all done with everything, you can just turn down these slider bars. So just set them right to minimum. And you'll see these active lights on the left turn off, and then you shut off the heater. So again, just click the yellow button and that turns off the heater and turns on the room light. And now the apparatus is ready for the next person. You can go back to camera preset one. And finally, when you're all finished and you've taken all your data, then you should tell the operator that you're done. So just go over to the chat window in Mikogo and tell them that you're done. And then they'll be able to pass control of the apparatus to the next student. Good luck with your experiment.